Hello everyone. In this presentation, let's see another interesting problem in relational algebra. Welcome to relational algebra solved problem part 4. Let's dive into the question now. The question is, consider the relations R with the attributes A and B and relation S with the attributes B and C, where S dot B, which is this, is a primary key and R dot B is a foreign key referencing to S dot B. Consider the query Q. R, natural join, sigma, I mean selection from the relation S with the predicate or the condition B less than 5. Let LOJ denote the natural left outer join operation. Assume that R and S contain no null values. Which of the following queries is not equivalent to the query Q? This question was asked in Gate Computer Science in the year 2018. The options are Option A. Sigma with a predicate B less than 5 from R natural join S. Option B. Sigma with the predicate B lesser than 5 from R left outer join S. Option C, R left out of join with the output of sigma with the predicate B lesser than 5 from the relation S. And option D, sigma with the predicate B less than 5 from the relation R. And this output relation left out of join S. Here we are going to solve this with our own examples. The condition that is already mentioned which is R and S contain no null values. In order to solve this, let's take some random values for the relation R and the relation S. We will first find out the output for this query Q. After that, what we are going to do, we are going to solve A, B, C and D. And we will just compare this output with the options so that which query or which output is not equivalent to the output provided by this query Q. This way we can find out the answer easily. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to take some random values, but the only condition R and S should not contain any null values. Let's go with the plan. Let's first solve this Q. So in order to solve this, I am bringing this here. What we are going to do now? R natural join sigma B lesser than 5 from the relation S. So to solve this, first we have to simplify this. Let's get the output for this. And then we will perform this output with our natural join. At first we are going to focus on this part. In order to solve this, let's take the random values for S, the relation S, which has two attributes B and C, where S dot B is a primary key. And that is why I have underlined B. What does primary key mean? It should contain unique values. It should not contain any null values. Let's take some random values 1, 4, 2, 6, 5, 6 for the columns B and C and this criteria is also matching. You can see there are no null values and we have only all unique values in the column B. I mean to say we don't have any duplicate values in the column B. Now let's focus our attention towards this. We have taken relation S here. Let's apply the selection process with the predicate or the condition B lesser than 5. So the output of this selection will be all the rows but the only condition is with the values for B lesser than 5. In this case, the values for B lesser than 5 will be 1 and 2. We will not get the row 5 here. The reason is 5 is not lesser than 5. 5 is lesser than or equal to 5 but strictly not 5 is lesser than 5. So in this case, as per this condition B lesser than 5, these two rows are getting selected and that is why we are able to see the output 1, 4 and 2, 6 in the output. Now this is just the intermediary output. We are yet to perform our natural join with this output. In order to do this, I'll go to the new slide where I will bring in some random values for R. Previously, we have taken random values only for S. Now we have chosen R. For R, we are taking the attributes A and B. In other words, the column A and B. Why? Because that is what is given in the question. A and B. 
remember this b whatever we are going to use right this r dot b is a foreign key referencing to s dot b it means whatever the value that we are going to take for b in the relation r these values should exist in the relation s and here it is not a primary key so we can have duplicate values here but whatever values we have here that should appear in the relation s let's double confirm this just see what are all the values that we have here for b 1 and 5 right so 1 and 5 should exist in the relation s can you see here 1 and 5 actually exist we don't have 2 in the other relation that is definitely not a problem but whatever we have taken for b in relation r all those values should exist in s because of the referential integrity that is mentioned which is foreign key referencing let's go to the slide so we have taken the relation r which is this and we have already computed this portion i am just bringing the output that we have evaluated previously now what we are going to do we are just going to perform r natural join with this output which is this i request you to pause this video for a while please have a paper and a pen with you kindly solve this and ensure that you are also getting the same output as like i am getting let's continue on this now what we are going to do this complete query q so the output is going to be this how did i get this this is natural join when we talk about natural join natural join combines table based on columns with the same names here it's going to combine the output from these two relations which is r and which is this because this natural join is on these two relations on what basis it joins based on the common attribute or common column in this case b is the common column that exists on both the relations of course this is a relation and one more thing about natural join it not just combines the relation based on common columns also the data type should be matching say for example if this is of integer data type this should also be of integer data type and in this case obviously we have taken an example like that so there is no need of any explicit condition to be specified for natural join in this case let's see what are all the common values that exist in relation r and this intermediary relation here we have one we have one here here we have two we don't have two here so the matching rows that exist on both the relation that will have definitely b with one so the output is going to contain 7 1 and 8 1 for sure and that is why we get 7 1 and 8 1 here for sure and what is the corresponding value for c for this value 1 in b it is 4 and that's why we get 4 in the output simply speaking we get matching rows from both the relations without specifying any condition because that's how natural join work so what we have done so far is we have generated the output for this query q now let me take this to a new slide what we have done so far we have taken relation r we have taken relation s and we have solved the query q what's given in the question and we have this output how we are going to proceed further on this question we are going to take all the options a b c and d we will get the output for all these queries we will just compare these output with this output that is what our plan is so let's take the first option a what we are going to do we are going to do selection on the relation r natural join s so we are going to perform this first and the output relation is going to be selected with the condition b lesser than 5 in order to do this what we need we are going to first take r s we will first perform the natural join and then we will perform the selection to do this i am bringing the same r what we have used for evaluating or getting the output for this query q and we will bring the same s that we have used what we are going to do r natural join s and the output is going to be this how we know how natural join works it's based on the common column it's b right in both the relation it's b b is the common column here we have one two five 
here we have 5, 1. What values are matching? 1 and 5 here. 1 and 5 here. So the output is going to contain only 1 and 5. So it's going to combine these two relations that has common values. So here 7, 5 and we have 5 here. So output is going to be 7, 5, 6 in the first row. 7, 1. Yes, we have 1 here. So 7, 1 and it's going to be joined with this or combined with this which is 7, 1, 4. And the last row is going to be 8, 1. Here we have 1. So it's going to be 8, 1 and 4. 8, 1 and 4. We will not get any output for 2 here because this is a natural join. What we have done so far is an intermediary result for our natural join S. Still one thing is pending in order to complete this query pertaining to this option A. What is that? It's selection process. So let's take this output which is our natural join S to a new slide. Now let's apply the selection process with the predicate or the condition B lesser than 5. Here B lesser than 5? No. This is yes, this is yes. So our output is going to contain these two rows, definitely not the first row. So the output is going to be these two rows, 714, 814. This is 714, 814. Why this is missing? Because this condition is not satisfied. We are done with getting the output for the option A. So what we have already solved, this query Q. Let's compare the output of this with option A, but not now, because we need to evaluate all the other queries that are mentioned in the question. So let's go to the new slide. We have relations R, S, and we have generated the output for query Q. We also have evaluated the option for the query which is mentioned in the option A, which is this. This is what we have just evaluated. Now what we are going to do? We are going to option B. Now let's take option B. Here is option B. Now how we are going to solve? As you know, brackets have more precedence. At first, let's solve our left outer join S. And the output what we are going to get for this left outer join operation is obviously going to be a relation and that relation is going to be the input for the selection operation. Let's take the condition B less than 5 and evaluate it. So let's start with our left outer join S. In order to do this, we will take R, we will take S. And what we are required to do? LOJ, the left outer join. It is an outer join which has more relations from left side. Because left outer join means all rows from the left relation only matching rows from the right relation. Just pause this video for a while and just think about the matching rows. Obviously, all rows from the left relation means 7, 5, 7, 1, 8, 1 will be there in the output. Then from the right relation, we have only matching rows. It means 5 here, 5 here. So this row will appear in the output. 1 is here and 1 is here. So we will get this row also appearing in the output. And we are very sure that we will not get any row with 2, 6. The reason is, this 2 doesn't exist in the left hand side. So obviously, the left outer join on R and S is going to be this. How? 7, 5, 7, 1, 8, 1. 7, 5, 7, 1, 8, 1. Just join what is against 5 here. It's 6. Just 6 is placed here. What is there for 1? It is 4. So for 1, it's 4. And this is the intermediary output that we have got. We are yet to apply selection. Let's go to the new slide. Let's bring the output that we got recently. Now let's apply the selection. Selection with the condition B less than 5. B less than 5. Here B is 5. It is not less than 5. So we will not get this row in the output. We will obviously get these two rows because 1 is less than 5. And hence, the output for option B is going to be 714814, meaning these two rows. So we have completed option B as well. Let's proceed with the same plan. Now we are going to evaluate option C, which is this. Let's bring in option C here, which is here. To solve this, what we need? We need relation S. 
Let's take the same relation S. Now what we are going to do? At first we are going to simplify this. It means we are going to apply the selection logic. Select with the predicate B less than 5. And selection we know B and C both will appear. But we will get only the first two rows because B less than 5 is the condition. Here B is less than 5. Here also B is less than 5. But here this condition is not satisfied. So the output for this sigma B less than 5 from the relation S which is going to have 1, 4, 2, 6 which is 1, 4, 2, 6. Now what we are required to do? This output is important. Because this output is the relation that is going to be on the right hand side. And in the left hand side we have R and what operation? LOJ, the left outer join. So let's go to a new slide. Let's bring in R which is the left hand side. Let's bring in the output that we got recently which is this side. Now we are going to apply R left outer join this output which is this. So we know left outer join all rows from the left relation which means 7, 5, 7, 1, 8, 1. We will get all three rows and only matching rows in the right side. Let me tell you, we will get 7, 5, 7, 1, 8, 1 for sure. That's why we get 7, 5, 7, 1, 8, 1 for sure. And in the right hand side, only matching rows. You see, 1 is here, we have 1. So, against 1, we have 4. Why? Because against 1, we have 4 here under C. And that's why we get 4 under C. But what about this? We have 7, 5 because all tuples from the left side will appear. But there is no matching row here. Just recollect one of the previous lectures, we have dealt about null values. Since there is no matching row, null value will be inserted here. And that's why we get this output. So we have evaluated option C as well. Now what is pending? The last one which is option D. Now let's get the result for option D, which is sigma from the relation R with the predicate B less than 5, this output left out to join S. In order to do this, first let's take the relation R, which is this. Now let's apply selection with the predicate B lesser than 5. Here B lesser than 5, no, so this row will not appear. But these two rows will appear because 1 is definitely lesser than 5. So the output for sigma from the relation R with the predicate B lesser than 5 will have 7, 1, 8, 1 which is these two rows. Now what we are going to do? This is going to be in the left hand side and we are going to apply left outer join with the relation S. To do this, I am just bringing this output which is this. What we need? S. We have S here. What we are going to do? This one, this left hand side, left outer join S, which is this. We know all rows from the left hand side will appear. So the output is going to contain 7181. Can you see 7181 and only matching row in the right hand side? What is the matching row in the right hand side? Which is only 1. What is the value for 1 for C? 4. So that's why we get this output. I hope things are clear to you. Now we have evaluated option D as well. What is asked in the question? We have got the output for all these five queries. So the question is, which of the following queries is not equivalent to Q, which is this. From the output, what we have computed, we can see Q is equivalent to option A, option B, and option D. So the only thing which is not equivalent is option C. So the right answer for this question is option C. I have solved this in an elaborate manner. When it is for a gate question, I would request you to reduce the number of rows that you are taking for solving this as an example and then solve this problem. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.